Yo, yo. Yes, sir. What's up, guys? Yes. This DJ will kick the floor in three, three, two, two, two one, ah. one, one, one. Hello and welcome to Mzanzi. We are back again. It's that time and it's Friday. All yeah. right. By the yeah. time you're watching this, it will be Friday. Yeah. Um, Emily, uh, for those who do not know us, we have been keeping up with uh, Dr. Nandipa for long, long story. And Dr. Dr. Baxter. Baxter and the rest, obviously. We are not uh, choosing sides here. We are going to talk about everyone else because we are putting the piece together with our uh, subscribers and if you are not a subscriber again that means that you are now called a subscriber so you must subscribe please please subscribe please press and the press that like button. button and interact with the video guys it's important um, and also we appreciate that you do want to interact with us on whatsapp but mostly interact with the video because that's what uh, is going to give us the views mm. yeah right Emily uh, hit the ground and run Hi guys, welcome back to the Mzanti Reality YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining us yet again for another Tabo Besta Saga update. Mm -hmm. It's what I call these videos because a lot is going on. There's way too much happening. Yeah. So yesterday, the G4S security guard appeared in, a Bloom, in the Bloemfontein Magistrates Court on charges relating to assisting in Tabo Bester's escape from the Mangawung uh, Correctional Facility in May last year. Yeah. So his name is Buti Masukela. Mm -hmm. And he was arrested on Tuesday at the Mangaung Correctional Facility. And according to his Facebook account, Masugela has been an employee at G4S since 2001. Yeah. Um, according to the National Police Spokesperson Brigadier Athlenda Mate, the 51-year-old faces a charge of assisting an inmate to escape from lawful custody and defeating the ends of justice. Masugela is the second prison warden from the Mangaung facility to face charges in this matter and Ma Mutanyani, his other name, so he has two names, Buti Mutanyani Masugela, was represented by Legal Aid. He told Legal Aid uh, he he has no prior convictions and has no pending cases. He was informed in court that his case will be combined with the others that have been arrested. He's now accused number six, mm. and he will remain behind bars until May, which is next month. His case has been remanded. So Masugela will be back in court on the 3rd and 4th of May, where he will join the other accused in the matter. So Dr. Nandipa, her father, Zolile Cornelia Sekeleni, former G4S security guard Sinuhe Matwara and the CCTV technician Tebuho Dipolo for bail application. Okay. So regarding Masugela's next court appearance, the state plans to oppose bail. So how is Masugela implicated in all of this? Mm -hmm. So Masugela was allegedly guarding the gate when the dead body was brought into the facility and passed off as Tabo Beste in cell 35 after it was found burnt. So he was the one manning the gate that allowed the buggy with the TV stand that could fit the body inside the Mangaung Correctional Facility mm. on that 3rd of May uh, last year, 2022. Yeah. So Correctional Facility uh, uh, apparently says he was on duty that day. His name appeared on the roster. So he was the one who was on duty on that specific day that the Baki of Van came in. And it's also understood that he has some knowledge of Besta's intricate web of lies, including how he managed to dupe officials to get himself out of prison and walk free. Okay. So his appearance was not like the spectacle that we saw last week. It was, in fact, very quiet. It was not that much of a big deal. I think it's because we are underwhelmed. I mean, we expected the big guns. Already, mm. we mm. expected like a hundred people to be arrested because there's no way <laughs> we expected. So he's his, it's like, ah, oh, it was underwhelming. It's just him of all the people that we expected. So, especially the big, the big, big, big connections that just look the other way. So, uh, Dr. Nandipa and uh. Uh, he, her father, remember last week they appeared in court and it was a whole 
spectacle. Mm. I mean, everybody wanted to know. Everybody was interested. But his, I, it was it really was not, quiet. It was not. It was like important. nothing was happening. Okay. Mm. So, well, by the by, by the looks of things, all these guys, one thing is common about them: they don't have money to pay for lawyers. Now that begs the question, obviously, to say that if indeed they did partake in such. Um, if they did, then mm. why don't they have money? You know, that, that's a question that is that for me still does not make sense. Oh, is the money done? Uh, perhaps. Or maybe in, they in, lay low. Or maybe they lay low and uh, and said, okay, it's fine. We can use, as as I explained last time, we can use uh, the state uh, as, as our lawyers because we, we are not that implicated in a sense. So whatever that we'll be getting is not as much as what Baxter will be getting, is not as probably, uh, hopefully, as much as uh, what Nandipa will be getting and so forth. And the, and the other guy, the, 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 the one who who's rich, uh, the rich man. Mm. Yeah. Because I remember there were allegations that Tabo had spent something like five million uh-huh. for, the, for the planned escape. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty obvious Sinuhe is the one who got the most money. Yeah, it's it's kind of looking like that. If it's not what he worked for, um, working that hard and spending that hard by the looks of picture, living large, well, we would say then if anything else, looking at the work that he's doing, do you think a person like that would be able to afford that life? Uh, that luxurious, luxurious life in the car, and even ranking himself uh, during those times at one of the top tens, as one of the top ten richest people. Those are the things that we obviously have to look at. And you look at this one, everything about them, the profile, and maybe is uh, this guy mm-hmm. just to play devil's advocate here. Okay. Maybe this guy is never was never part of this thing. He was just taking instructions. Well, he has to prove it. And that's the thing. Obviously, now you have to prove it. He and has to uh, prove it. And one thing that is very alarming is the company itself. There has been accountability in a sense, but not fully accounting. They just gonna keep on throwing more people. Their employees under the bus. Yes. That's what they did with the, with the hearing, and now they are doing it with the law. I guess. Yeah, they just gonna keep on. It's just employees throwing Let's everyone. Throw them under the bus. Under the bus. Let's throw which, them under which the begs bus. the question as to why are they still holding that position of being uh, in charge of that uh, prison? If if that is the case, why are they still uh, part of that prison? Because. Now, by now, they should have been paused. Someone else should have taken over that, or even government himself, because it's it's a it's a public interest now. This, this DCS whole has, has, I think they have. I, they made some an, an announcement that they did. However, as for terminating the contract, no, they haven't. Because there are there are implications. That's what I've, I've questioned our law about. Our laws about. You know, our laws they tend to support less than they tend to support south african less more than the outsiders that's i don't know if it came right that we are being supported less anything that you do you must consider the outsider more and this company is an yes. outsider yes. that's what i'm trying to say yes. i mean we have, we have a point there. we have people here coming in and this country going straight coming in illegal in fact by force mm-hmm. remember those people who are waiting to to enter south africa and then after that they go to the judge and the judge says they must they yes. must be allow, uh, yes. allowed allowed asylum yes. it, it is funny how these laws maybe if you look at them Maybe there's truth in what, uh, for those who have watched Advocates Kakane talking uh, with Sizwe, uh, these laws must be changed. Mm-hmm. It's time they because are not, they are not looking out They were for not South looking Africans. out for South Africans. At the time when they were made, they were supporting exactly that, the outsiders. Mm-hmm. Now it's time f- to change them because they, are keep, they keep on supporting the outsiders. 
and they are compromising South and, Africans and, 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 and a lot. To, to see that they are even compromising us a lot. You look at the system of America where you can get a case anytime, anywhere. Mm. And then our system, you need to go to the... And you have to look at that. You need to go to... Where Where do you need to go to get that? To the courthouse. Fill exactly. in your details. Fill in your details. Your address, so your phone number. Your stuff, you know, so that they can track you. Your staff. So that you just have a look at your, at your case. Just to have a look at the court transcripts. And sometimes when you go there, they're not even available. Exactly. So what is that? You're saying I have rights, but... You, you are not giving me access to my rights. So what if I'm in prison and I feel like what happened at court, something went wrong mm. and I want to appeal. So it means I must go hire a lawyer to get me access to my court transcript so that I can see what exactly happened in court and what really nailed me. And and, and, and I'm, I'm, I feel that I'm innocent or I feel like I, I was robbed in the courts. In all I honest, can't our, appeal our, by myself. Our laws, we have seen them in action when the, the, the president, the former president, uh, is questioning or taking them back and forth. That's when we have seen that, oh, you can actually even do that. You can actually do that. He's actually testing and stretching them yeah. for us to see as mm. the public that, oh, this is what's happening. Oh, my God. Mm. This is what's happening. Mm. This is what's sure. I, eh, nah, I'm, 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 I'm just shocked at everything and how it's happening because I was expecting G4S to have been given the boot by now to be saying, you know what, in you any guys, country, and and also be sued. There must be some form of fines and repatriations that mm. they they mm. they must pay mm. because mm. they have put us in danger. In any country, they would have been sued by now. So I don't understand what is happening over there. I really don't get it. I don't get what's so hard about terminating this contract. In any country, they because have they been have been out. in breach of it, haven't they been in breach of the contract? Except for South Africa. I mean, South Africa, you find that they they have removed them, uh, 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 but still paying for them because they need to own up to a contract. That's what you know. They spend forty four million a month mm. paying G four S guys forty four million rands. Every month, right? So, apparently, Tabo Besta also has been a crook and has been scamming people from a tender age, Alleged. okay? Allegedly, so he's been using his background to you know to, to manipulate and to get what he wants from people mm. from the time that he was a child. This is something that he kind of learned at a very young age mm -hmm. allegedly. So mm -hmm. he used to use his poor back background to con people in primary school. Now his primary school teacher who spoke to Zimoja on conditions of anonymity, Mr. Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> they said that Besta had started his crime spree when he was young. And this particular anonymous teacher, a teacher says that she knew that this day would come. Now, another teacher of his at Lyre School, Dani Theron, you saw uh, a, a particular um, news, news broadcaster tried to go into the background of a uh, uh, Tabo Beste. So they went to the school that he, he was studying in, the primary school that uh, Dr. Aaron Mazzualedi had mentioned. So the school is Raya School, Dani Theron in Kibla Park in Johannesburg. Now this teacher told Zimoja that Besta was already ahead of his peers in primary school. The teacher said that while other kids were learning how to read and write, Besta was extorting money from people around him. He was living with his grandmother at the time and they were poor. So he would use that to manipulate people. He conned a lot of people asking for money for either books, school case, or bus fares. The teacher added that people always bought his poverty sto sob story. I mean, what, what did you expect them to do? It's a child and they're telling you a sad story. I mean, you would feel sorry for them and started donating to what his family needs. So these people would actually help out. 
You know, mm. they wouldn't be called like right now. Right now, it's not so easy to get people to help you. People have questions. So according to the anonymous teacher, people used to buy him books, pay his bus fare, and some would even pay for his school fees. That is how lucky he was. But he soon took advantage of that and mistook their kindness for foolishness. Okay, let me, let me ask you something. Mm-hmm. Who was paying for this guy? School fees. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it it's it's a government school, but I think it does have school fees. So who the guardian who took him to the school, I'm going to assume I don't know if it's it's, it's okay, but I think in my opinion it was the grandmother while she was still alive. Uh-huh. I think she's the one who took Tabo to school. Yeah. I think so. I, I could be wrong, guys. So if you found out information regarding that Please correct me in the comment section. Mm-hmm. So I think it was the grandmother, and the grandmother was working for a particular family, remember? Yeah. Before she passed away. Uh-huh. So they were poor. Yeah, because I'm, I'm thinking of that also. Uh, based on what uh, I'm told the mother was was doing and the grandmother was doing, if this guy is well-spoken like this, who who was paying for that? I mean, it can be that you went to village schools and and whatnot. I, I doubt that is the case. So who was paying for this guy? This kid's kid. This kid's the school fees. Mm. All right. So once Besta realized that people are easily manipulated, he pleaded poverty and conned people outside of the school premises. The teacher says he would skip class or bunk school to go hustle outside. He was a hustler. Okay. As a kid. Mm -hmm. He used to go to the East Gate uh, more and ask people to sponsor him for a rugby tour. Now, according to the teacher, I would often target elderly people, mothers who would be walking with their kids, or stay-at-home moms who were sympathetic towards him. Rugby tour. That means now this is a this is a mixed school mm-hmm. because you don't get rugby just just like that in most schools. Yeah, it's 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 mixed. It's mm. a mixed school. You are definitely right with that. But it wasn't a bad school. It's one. It was one of those schools that has like a higher, you know, Model C vibe. So his big break was an old man, apparently. The anonymous teacher said that there was an old man who opened a bank account and raised funds for Besta. And Besta conned the old man by taking him for a ride. Now, this teacher says that she remembers when the poor old man realized that he was played and the money from the bank account was withdrawn. She says that this man came to the school looking defeated. The school secretary at the time and this anonymous teacher had to go and fetch Besta at the Eastgate Mall. When they found him, she said that there were no signs of him being remorseful and she knew then that one day he was going to do something major that would land him in the trouble that he's in today. This is a teacher of no color. Mm-hmm. By, by, by the looks of the, the explanation, sounds like, it. sounds like a teacher of no color. That's how they would explain you. Mm-hmm. So what did you think about that? I found it very interesting that from that primary school... What did he use the, to he diagnose was, that the kid, a young kid, as they always put it like that, uh, was not showing remorse? Maybe he saw how he reacted. He reacted after being caught. He was expecting him to say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. But instead he was like, it's my But other kids are quiet. It's my hey, money. I don't care. These people are good in telling us, hey, kids react different, kids are different and whatnot. Today, because this one is looking different from the, the kids that they, they are used to teaching, which probably they would explain. If, if, if you talk about uh, other people, uh, because there are other schemas, by the way. We're still going to go to a, a lot of things. We, we have, a, in fact, we are preparing no, 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 a story. No, 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 no. Hold up, don't share too much yeah. because there's tendencies here. <laughs> two streets. Wait. Okay. But what I'm trying to say is that there are people who have 
similar behavior to Berkster's behavior, but they are people of no color. And no the, one the, the, the explains them. The aesthetic hides them. Mm. They, they are hidden because of their skin color. They are hidden because of they come from privileged homes. Some of them, they are hidden because they can speak a specific language. Mm. So just because you can talk a particular language, you're more trusted. Uh, you Everything is overlooked. All the red flags that you're showing are overlooked until such a time where you are in serious trouble. Uh, and, and, and you find yourself in trouble with the long umbrella and bell. But then what I find as well is that they will be assessed and uh, try to get diagnosed. And I'm pretty shocked with the charges that Besta has that that hasn't happened where people say group of psychologists come in and really assess him just to see if there's anything uh, uh, mentally mm. wrong or something that they can diagnose him with if it's there if it's not then it's still okay but i know for a fact that if he was of the other color that would have happened the moment that uh, he got arrested with those many 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 charges in mm. 2011 mm. oh well let's continue uh so go there but yeah, I found this very interesting because already I, I know you don't agree with the assessment of the teacher, but I, I, I've seen a similar also experience. <laughs> I've seen a similar experience and I'm like, okay, she was observant. She was observant, but it's just too bad that there's nothing that she did about it. Or I feel like there's nothing she did about it. I mean, she would, she would have... Uh, maybe we expect a lot maybe from teachers, I don't know, but I would have looked more into where he comes from and his family and try to understand what say, why is he such a liar, so young, what is happening? <laughs> and probably get him therapy, you know? But as 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 as, as fun in South Africa, things are different. So the twelve million rent mention uh, that Doctor Nandipa and Tabo Beste were renting in Hyde Park is now to let uh, at seventy thousand rands per month. Okay, Fortune Property Smiths comp confirmed to Zimoja that the house is back up for rental. Mm. It's a beautiful house, but hey. After what has just happened, <laughs> it is a beautiful four bedroom home going for 70,000 rands a month in rent. And details of the house have not yet been uploaded on the property website as the home has recently been vacant due to police investigations. He said that they'll be updating the site soon for people to start viewing. It is beautiful and located in luxurious Hyde Park. Now, my question is, did they find any of those alleged bodies of the maid and or garden guy who were said to be missing when the police and forensics were raiding the mansion? Look, I, I don't know. But, uh, it, well, I'm thinking of the price right now. The price is your... It's more like you are paying your bond. Most. Hyde Park. Yeah, but that's too expensive, man. Hey, so why would you rent a house for seventy? It's Hyde why would Park. you? Why would you not buy your house, Mus? It's Hyde Park, remember? Yeah, Closer but to a neighbor of 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 the prime minister, the head of state. It's it's not just. You have to go there. Is it a neighbor? <laughs> Not necessarily a neighbor, but you are in the same area. You are breathing the same air, like. Of course, it's going to be high. Yeah, but the houses there are not that expensive in Emir. How do expensive. you know that? Yeah, because I've checked the the, 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 the the prices there. Well, a staff member from the estate agent who did not want to be identified described how the woman who previously lived in the home, Dr. Nandi Pamagutumana, flaunted her wealth. Of course, she did on Instagram with luxury cars, designer wear, and lived lavishly. She drove luxurious cars and lived a good life. The property is reported to have been under Tabo's alias name, Gatlejo Tom TK Mutsepe Ngwana. And Dr. Nandipa explained that her husband, listen to this, her husband was overseas, whereas he was still serving time behind bars. 
Mm. So that's what he would tell them, that my husband is overseas child. And uh, he will be coming regularly in and out to come and visit, allegedly. So mm. the insider says that the property owners have had to make a few refurbishments to the home. Nothing major. Nandipa didn't own the house, so we can, they can do as they please. So the house is still beautiful and in top tip conditions. This sounds like a sell pitch. They want to sell this house. <laughs> they want to get a new tenant as soon as possible. Two months before the prison break, it is reported that an Airbnb profile in the name TK Nguana was created and used to make around 10 bookings at luxury homes in Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal. Mm -hmm. One was a Balito mansion in an estate. It was a mansion in an estate in Balito Bay in KwaZulu-Natal. So from the 12th until the 14th of March 2022, Worth 18,000 rands. And the name Dr. Nandipa used to book herself into that B Balito Bay mansion was Dr. Enjoy Makuduma Nangwana. Mm. Dr. Enjoy. As yeah, she was I, one I, of the guests along with the other two people. I've got in the, the prices because I'm looking at the at these uh, townhouses in there, Hyde Park. But Hyde Park is, is it's, it's like... I'm seeing an eight million, eight point something million price. So, do you, do you, do you think? Because my thinking is that we have Stain City. That is more expensive than uh, Hyde Park. Yeah, so it can be so seventy thousand. But it's you are renting. It's are not renting like you are buying Stain the City. house. What then? What is a rent at Stain City? Then? I don't know. And honestly, at this point, I have too many problems to ask myself that question. <laughs> no, I'm thinking, why are, are they renting it high? Because there was this incident in it and it's famous. No, now. but they were paying 80,000 rents per month. Nandi Pine TK, a.k.a. Tabo Best Day. So they were overcharged on top of that. Okay. They were paying the, the, when the news first came out. The, the price that they were saying was eight, they were renting it at eighty thousand. And it has been month. reduced to ten, but it's okay. It's fine. It's a business. It's business. How? <laughs> <laughs> now another exclusive that we got from independent media is that there's also a beauty salon owner who came forward to independent media and claims to have been recruiting girls for Tabo Beste and Dr. Nandipa in Cape Town in November last year. Now, their story is important because it's a link to this association of the businesses that they would like to do with young, beautiful women. So speaking exclusively to independent media, the beauty therapist trading under the name Teffy Telly Mars, who is also known as Talent and runs an event, event, event management company and the Cape Town Nails Guru. So he does nails. Mm -hmm. He specializes in nails. I looked him up on Instagram. Mm. Yes, he, he, he's businesses nails oh. which uh, specializes in nails manicures and pedicures revealed that besta and makudumana paid him handsomely for recruiting beautiful girls for them so he explained that when he was hired by the couple he was not aware of who Besta was until he appeared in the news after it was exposed that the fugitive and his partner were the most wanted by the country's law enforcement agencies. The talent, and I quote, this is what talent said to the paper. I met Tabo Besta in November 2022. He came to my salon for a haircut and I assisted him. When he was about to leave, he asked if he could have my number to make an appointment should he want to come again. We started chatting on WhatsApp and he invited me for lunch at the Silo Hotel where he told me about business ventures. So I don't know whether it's the Silo Hotel, Silo Hotel. He said that he was in property development and media-related work. Besta started coming to my salon twice a week where I was plating his hair. 
Three weeks later, after I had met him, he indicated that he would bring his wife and some of the people he introduced as Dr. Nandipa's cousins. Mm. I did their nails, manicure, but I had questions about Dr. Nandipa because I knew her from social media. I was shocked because I knew she was married, but I decided to keep it to myself because I don't get into other people's private lives. Mm. End quote. Now, Talent revealed that he became close to Dr. Nandipa and would often go out for lunch with her and the kids, but did not suspect that there was anything inappropriate or inconvenient. Mm. He disclosed that Besta and Magudumana owned a model agency known as that the couple had become very aware of his events management skills. Mm -hmm. Now, the company name that they named this model agency in is iModel Management. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, where he hosted parties in various nightclubs. So, he, he has an event management skills where he hosts parties in various nightclubs around the city of Cape Town. So, Besta and Makudumana asked him to work for them, recruiting girls, and paid him a lot of money for his services. Yeah. I model management. Now there's something about this I model management. I looked it up and there's a similar international modeling agency under the same name. Mm -hmm. So it's like he just took that name, you know? Yeah. It itself, I'm not sure if this iModel management was a registered company. Mm -hmm. So Talent said that he recruited the girls as per the specific criteria they had given him. Mm. He would send them pictures and set up a meeting for Besta with the models. At some point, he would personally attend meetings with the models. And once satisfied, he would send Besta their details, including their pictures. He said that he attended more than five meetings with Besta and the models. He said that in December last year, Besta gave him a call and informed him that a model from Johannesburg would fly down to Cape Town and he was sent money to arrange all the logistics. He says that he booked for her at the Cape Capital Hotel and made her comfortable as instructed by Besta. Before the model came, they had a conference call where Dr. Nandipa, Besta, and another girl discussed everything about the model. Teffy Taylor provided independent media with the WhatsApp messages where he was directly in contact with Besta and provided pictures and details of the models. Yeah, is this the end? That's the end. Well, there you go, guys. Very, 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 very funny that uh, we have people who would love to live through these models and slaying and whatnot. These are the things that you have to think of for those people. And we have people that are really uh, manipulating our people here on social media. Hey, this is the life they are living, showing these fleshy lives. Exactly. This is what they go through, probably. Well, I wouldn't like to bash a talent much. I appreciate him for coming forward because this is a difficult You know, he time. had to because now there might be implications of to, 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 to him if this case goes the other, other side. He, he, he did very the well right for himself. Thing. He did the right thing. I, I would have done that if I, I, I've worked with this man. Mm -hmm. Everyone who has worked with these people needs to come out come and out. say, this is what was happening. Because this is a very important... For me, it's important because we have a Dr. Nandipa fan club and they're like, oh, she didn't know anything. She was manipulated. She just ma manipulated. She was living the soft life. She no, was man, abused. People, are, 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 people don't want to... to, to, to <laughs> other, you know, other people, just because she's a beautiful lady, educated... Why, why isn't Rosemary? Like, no, no, they won't say the that same, to me. They, they treat she, Rosemary she as, 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 as the worst thing that has ever happened. In fact, they make jokes about her. Yeah, exactly. But she's excused. She was part of 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 everything 
She was kept in the loop. She was a part. She was there talking with the models. There it is explained. He was, was explaining there. the models, doing all these things. It is explained. And some cousin, by the way. It is explained. It is explained now that Nandi was not looking out of kilter. Mm. Nandi was fine. She, she was, was okay. business as usual. Business. Stop coming here with uh, reverse psychology. Hey, hey, maybe, maybe. No. And no. remember, she met, reports are coming out that she met Tabo Best in 2006, and she was a promo girl and model as well. So Tabo Best at the time was running a model agency. Mm. So 2006, now it was 2021 at the time, it's still modeling agency. It's modeling. Yeah. It's, it's modeling. This business. It's business. So that association from 2006, you know, that's, that's more than a decade of working in the same business, of recruiting models. Well, let us let you think on your, on your own without infiltrating your, your, your thinking. We just delivered uh, some extra as usual. We will keep, uh, keep you updated um, if you're missing something and we don't want to explain a lot in this because there is um, there is uh, something cooking but we need to look at it just let you digest it and then we can then continue okay guys that's it from us for this episode and thank you so much for joining us don't forget to do the right thing okay like the video please i'd really appreciate it